Okay. Okay. Here we're doing we this again. We're <laughs> I just happened to glance up and notice that the camera was not actually turned on. Which is never a good thing when you're busy chatting. Right. And assuming that everything is working well. Okay. We're going to have this conversation again and introduce you again to what Sarah did with uh, my posies quilt, which is just amazing. All this detail. So this is the embroidered applique version. Right. So you sent me your original artwork. Right. Which was essentially the outlines for each of the shapes. Right. I brought that into the digitizing software and had fun. It's just beautiful. So in my original version, it has the fabric is doing the work, right? Yeah. The fabric is kind of the beautiful design on the fabric. When I'm working, I tend to go with solid light or, colors or solid almost light solids. fabrics. Right. So that the thread work can stand out. Right. Cause this would be lost if it was put on you a know, busy fabric. You know, there are some people who will stitch this onto, um, onto patterned fabrics and sometimes it can actually look really phenomenal. I bet it. So it would be an interesting thing to see what would happen if we put the stitching onto one of your fabrics that has It would be on. very interesting, wouldn't it? Yeah, I think that could actually be kind of fun. So when we recorded this before, we were telling each other thread stories. We have to tell a, th a thread story <laughs> again because both of us live like similar lives in terms of, you know, your, your business is your house. Right. So, there's you know, it's thread not everywhere and there's people everywhere and there's people running in and out. And, you know, we've both done that. And I think um, it started because you had some thread on you. And of course, because we're filming, I had to pull the thread off, right? Right. But you know you're a quilter if you wear thread around, right? right. And so you, you were spotted once wearing <laughs> thread. So I was in Nordstrom's one day riding down the elevator and I stepped off at the bottom and this lady tapped me on the shoulder and she said, excuse me, I don't like to bother you, but I thought you might like to know that you've got a thread on your skirt. And I was very nice to her and I said, thank you so much for letting me know. Yeah, it's and like I'm I thinking, always have thread on my skirt. Yeah, I'm thinking <laughs> if only you knew. Right. The fact that I've got only one thread on my skirt this is a yeah. kind of miracle. I'm usually right. covered in this stuff. Right. And I was saying that uh, my, my kids were very leery of spaghetti growing up because they thought it was thread and I was feeding them the thread. Yeah. Well, Jasmine, when she was little, absolutely loved thread. And there's about 36 inches of thread when you change threads on the 8 series machines. Because yes. you have to cut it, um, at the top. cut it at the top and then pull it through so that you don't damage the machine. And there was a period of time when, when the girls were little and I would actually keep all of these threads. and. I have a handle on the drawer on my sewing cabinet and I would just drape the threads over the handle. And Jasmine, she was three or four at the time, she loved to come and just stroke the thread. She just thought this was the best thing. Pretty colors. Like mother, like daughter. Yeah. But you know, pretty colors and it's so soft to touch. So we use the Aurifil Cotton Mako. It just oh, that's, yeah, that's my favorite. Yeah. So good. And then one day she was busy stroking the thread and it all fell off and landed in a heap on the floor. <laughs> and the look on her face was priceless because she's like, <gasps> what's mommy going to say? Sarah, if you kept that up, <laughs> this whole room would be full of thread. The whole thing about like saving every piece of thread. Because you I have know, a lot of that, thread. It, yeah, it got to the point, it's like, I would love to save this. I have absolutely no idea what to do with it. Maybe somebody who is into hand quilting or hand applique or whatever might have used it. That's a lot of thread. It's a lot of thread. So you put a lot of thread on here and it looks yes. beautiful. Yes, thank you. 
I love the variegated pink that you tried here. I really like that. Um, variegated is a gorgeous color whenever you're doing candle wicking. Okay. I didn't have a, a green, otherwise I would have used it to do the candle looking around all of these little circles. Um, but for the runnings, it just has, it's a fairly random variegation in the Orville thread. Right. So I love how it just turns out. You can never really anticipate what it's going to look like. And each of them is different. Yes, even though it's the exact same design and it's the exact same thread color. And I love the, the detail in the stem here. Now the stem is kind of interesting because it's a fairly narrow shape. Right. And I didn't want to overwhelm it with a solid satin stitch outline. And so I used a narrowest, it's called oh, a yeah. stem stitch. But the stem stitch isn't really wide enough to anchor the fabric, anchor the applique shape by itself. So I use a fill stitch underneath it. And that really anchors it. And then the, the stem stitch around is just giving you a really neat finish. So lots of fun things that you can do with the stitching. And this uh, over here where it's kind of, it's ran, it's look like, looks like Zen tangles, you know? It's that is exactly it. Yes, that is exactly it. All of these designs are, you know, some hand doodling. Uh, right. Zen tangles. So the asymmetry really works with the design. Yeah. In this case. Yeah. Oh, I love it. And each leaf is different. I, I keep looking at it and noticing different things, <laughs> right? We had so much fun doing this one. And I love, we used the cotton shot. So right. all of the fabric is cotton shot. And I wanted to have a version which was really strong color on the background. I don't typically like um, stitching on black because... You the can't eyeballs, see, yeah, just you can't, can't see, see anything. But the, this really dark, beautiful blue, um, I really love that. And I love how it makes all of these bright colors pop. Right. Isn't that just interesting so, with color? I used a dark blue, too. Yeah. And it really changes everything when so you... So, do you want to see something? Yes, yes, yes. Oh! We also did it up using the Cotton Shop Pearl. Oh, so pretty. And just the soft muted colors. Um, it's totally different look. Right, so delicate. But the exact same designs and the exact same stitching. Wow. So this is... Um, oh, look how a, different these look. Isn't that amazing? Just this one has the thread color is more or less an exact match to the fabric. Mm -hmm. And this one, we went with a much higher contrast. Right. And then... I like them both. I, like, how do you decide sometimes? Sometimes it's a case of... I can't decide, so I'm just going to pick Take one. a chance. Take a chance. Um, and then that, that's the same thing again, just using that variegated thread. Isn't that, I mean, because Sarah teaches, she has a lot of online classes, and one of the thing that's, things that is most gratifying is to see your work, because we can't stitch six million variations of our project, but like right. you travel around and I see a lot of different things people have done with my fabric or done with our patterns, and we wouldn't have even thought of that. Absolutely. That is why I love, we have a weekly Zoom uh -huh. session and people can come and ask questions, you know, if they're working on one of my projects and they get stuck, it was mm -hmm. like, well, come and show me what's going on and we'll figure it out together. But on the fourth Friday, every month we have a show and share. So I invite people to bring their projects that they've been working on. Right. And just let everybody see, because as you say, people come up with the most amazing color combinations that I would never have thought right. of. It's really gratifying as a designer to see your designs out in the wild. Like people right, post in yeah. my Facebook group and it's great to be able to see it. Yeah, because you might not like my colors. Well, I like your colors. Well, I love these colors. <laughs> but, <laughs> I know, but, but, but somebody might not like these colors. But if they've got a favorite color and they're willing to experiment a little bit, 
I've seen gorgeous things that I would never, ever, ever dreamt of. Yeah, that's great to see online. I don't know which one I like better. Huh. They are very different. Okay, so I saw how you stitch something, uh, an isolated project in a hoop. Right. And what I'm always afraid of with multi-hooping is that, you know, if I, if I do the motif separately, when I come around the circle, it's not going to meet up right. So how, I, she's, she's an engineering mind, so she, you know, she's going to think things through. How do you make it so people like me can hoop it? <laughs> it is really interesting. If you can follow some pretty simple instructions, then you can do this. So, so... Part of the thing as a designer, I know for me is, you know, I have to, I have to design a pattern, but I also have to be able to explain how to put together the pattern to someone else, mm -hmm. right? So it takes right. a different mindset than if you're just playing by yourself. Yes. So how do you make that happen in embroidery? So in embroidery, I, I can't, I, I decided one day, if I want to get a design exactly where I want it, all I need is a crosshair. So it could be a plus sign or it could be an X. Okay. Two, two lines that intersect at right angles. Okay. Right? So it might be that you have a center line going in both directions. Okay. So if, if we take the circle in the middle by itself, if I've got a line here and a line there and they, they meet in the middle, I can draw that on a piece of paper or on a piece of stabilizer. Okay. Right? And I can find the intersection in the design. I'm going to build into the design that same intersection. Okay. Now, I never hoop fabric. I okay. only ever hoop a piece of stabilizer. So, the same as we did for that, we put stabilizer in the hoop and stitched a placement line on the stabilizer. Now, the placement line was a circle. Right. So, we could make sure that piece of the square that went down on top covered it exactly. Right. Right. For, for stitching this circle exactly where I want it in the middle of this piece of fabric, this circle has a cross or a plus sign. And that is the first thing that stitches onto the stabilizer in the hoop. Okay. Okay. So now I've got my piece of background fabric, which is marked. Okay. And I've got my design stitching out color number one on the stabilizer, which is an exact match marking. So a plus sign on the stabilizer, a plus sign on the fabric. Now I can use a pin to align the intersection here with the intersection on the background, on the stabilizer. Now, this is a design that isn't going to fit into one hooping, right? We've actually got three, um, three repeats. Right. So, we need more than just the center lines. Oh, okay. What we actually have is that this is the center line going in one direction right. and the other direction. This so tear I, away? This is a tear away stabilizer. Okay. So eventually we're going to actually tear this away. Okay. Completely get rid of it. Um, so we've got a center line here, a center line here. And then I decided, okay, we'll go five inches that way, five inches that way with these two lines. And this is, um, I'm drawing onto a piece of stabilizer and then five inches above that way, five inches below this way. Okay. Okay. So now I've got a grid drawn on a piece of stabilizer. Right. Then I'm going to take my background fabric. Now for this particular project, we decided to stitch it with a batting as well. Okay. So I've got background fabric and batting. Depending on the project, I might just have the background fabric. If it's like a big quilt. Yeah. Okay. If I want to quilt it in the hoop and have the quilting show up nicely on the back. Okay. Um, okay. So the background fabric, 
with the stabilizer. Okay. Center together, and then I'm going to pin baste it really well, and then I'm going to machine baste along all of these lines. Okay. So, and I'm actually stitching on the stabilizer. So the 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 top thread is going to show up on the stabilizer. The bobbin thread is going to show up on the background fabric. Okay. And so now I've got the stabilizer on the back with the grid lines and I've got all of the bobbin thread showing up on the front. Okay. With a grid. So now I can stitch a design exactly where I want it. It's just that I'm stitching three different design. Well, actually, I'm stitching one design in three different places. Now, let me just orient this. Um, I decided that that there was going to be my repeat. Okay. And so it's a circle, 360 degrees mm -hmm. divided by three is 120. So that rotated around the center, 120 gets you there, and rotate that 120 around the center gets you here. But your grid lines are different on all but of the them. The grid lines are going to be different. So the design that stitches here, um, we've got a center line going down there, and we've got the line that was five inches away over here. So we've got an intersection right around here. So that intersection is built into the design. Okay, so they're getting three different files. So that this particular quilt, there are three different files, yes. Okay. Because over here, we've got a center line, we've got five inches to the left, we've got a center line, and we've got five inches above. So there's an intersection kind of here. Okay. So the design that you stitch here has one set of intersections built into it. The design to stitch here has a second set of intersections built into it, and the design that goes here has a third set. All relative to the grid that you based it out. All relative to the grid. Okay. So when I'm, when I'm creating the design in the embroidery software, I will at, so I only actually digitized this one time mm -hmm. and then rotated it to create this, and then I put the grid on top of it, Okay. And then split it up. Okay. So that everything is in the right place. And you can see, like right here, th this is stitching out in one hooping. This is stitching out in the other hooping. And it is pretty close. Right. But it's exact. Okay. Right? Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Now, this particular design, um, the motif fits perfectly into the jumbo hoop so and of course Sarah has three jumbo hoops <laughs> which is like a quilter's well, dream I, but, have, or well, I actually dream. have four eight series machines but we only use three of them for embroidery the other one we have set up over there um, and we do all of the piecing because the thing machine. is these it, it, it's so Bernina's are so precise in their yes. stitching so yes so that would be the three hoopings, but if you only have a maxi hoop, that's me because I have which seven would be series. You, yeah, you have yeah, a yeah. Seven series machine. Then we would still look at, let's say this this motif here. Okay. That's not going to fit in here. Okay. It's, it's kind of really close. Um, the, the, the stitchable area of the, it's just too of the hoop is here. Yeah. So this, again, gets split up so that you can stitch this piece here. Okay. So these three leaves, these four dots, and this swirl, you can stitch that there. And again, we've got the grid lines. So when... I download the design, it's probably separated according to it's the hoop to size. It's going to be separated according to your hoop size, yes. Okay. So that, that is all in one hooping and that Okay. to stitch these pieces out here. This is why you know the hoop sizes by heart. <laughs> like I always have to Google my hoop sizes. 
just to make sure I'm right. But she's like, oh, that's this and this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. I am very familiar with hoop sizes. Yes. Because I have to be, you know, to the millimeter. Right. To make sure that a design will actually fit into, into the right hoop. Well, that makes sense. So just beautiful. Even if, you know, some people say, well, I don't want to do multiple hoopings, but mm-hmm. like, why not? Because it's actually so easy. Well, it's I think sometimes so people easy. just think they can't figure it out, but you figured it, you I sort figure of figure it all out, it all out so for them. So as long as you can follow some written instructions, right. and most times with our design collections, we've been including videos as well. So you can actually kind of look over my shoulder whilst I'm actually doing everything, following the instructions. You know, I'll actually step through all of the instructions. I was excited we were filming this because I think um, there are people like me out there who, who don't kind of know the process. Mm-hmm. But once they understand the process, they you think know, they could do it. I. I used to travel and teach the same way that you do. This is how we, we met. We met a, either at a quilt market or at teaching events. Some, I can't, I can't like, remember. A long, but a long, long, long time, time ago. ago. <laughs> <laughs> but one of the things that people would say to me when they would come to one of my in-person classes was, I've had this design collection or one of your design collections for a long time and I've been too scared to stitch it and then they come to the class and they learn the technique and it is exactly the same no matter which design collection and they say I wished I read the instructions and just jumped in right because it is so well I didn't realize you you kind of used a grid and it was right on the top of the fabric Mm-hmm. You so, can, if if you look carefully, you can still see the the lines mm-hmm. where the basting lines were, because um, this still needs, uh, you know, it still needs to have another press. Mm-hmm. But everything is based on a grid. Okay, excellent. And we've got, you know, there's, I mean, there's no limit really to the size. Right, of, that, of the project we stitch. did. We've, we've stitched 36 inch squares. So if I'm a quilt marker or something, and Sarah, I think you saw uh, pictures of this, and you were like, uh-huh. oh, this is perfect for applique and yeah. machine embroidered applique. Um, I was like, please let me do it. Yeah, pl- I please, because so I always fun. like to see, I always like to see what, uh, you know, how other people take designs as a jumping off point. And this is certainly something I would not think up. So it's amazing. It's amazing. Thank you. We've had a lot of fun with this. So I hope, I hope they've enjoyed seeing it and um, seeing how the technique works. I don't know which one I like better. <laughs> I love this one. I just love the, the bright. The, it's dramatic. The bright. It is, yes. I am excited for finishing it. I always find when you've actually trimmed something to the right size, gotten rid of all the fuzzy edges around it, and then put a binding on it. It's just... It, it just brings it all together. Were you reminding somebody yes, to Yes, I was something? reminding something. <laughs> Let's just... Well, we can just stop. Hold on. Let me make sure it's off, off. Not just snoozing. Is Amanda the it's only it. person who's... Yes. Alarms go off when least yes, expected. Yes, but I shouldn't do it when filming. <laughs> okay. So the only other thing, we were wondering about quilting this. We debated because mine's very heavily quilted, but mine doesn't have as much going on in the flowers. Right. So, so we actually decided because this is a table topper, the back didn't need to be, you didn't need to see any quilting on the back in and I, I sat and I played with this so long on the computer. And then I figured, you know what? I'm going to wait and see what it looks like when it's stitched out. And I actually came to the conclusion that because we've stitched it on the batting, there aren't really big areas to be quilted. And I don't actually think it needs any quilting. Right. Because it's already secured down. Because when right. I did mine... 
it was not, when I went around with the blanket stitch, of course there was no batting. So the quilting's really okay. securing that, but you don't need it for such a small project. So this is actually one of, probably the first project that's not going, not going to have any quilting on it. Um, just finished beautifully as a circle and and then used and loved. I can't wait. I can't wait either. It's going to be so much fun. Thank you so much for having me. It has been so much fun <laughs> having you here. I think it's been three years since you were here in Phoenix I, because before. Because there was that little matter of that like little the matter pot. of the pandemic. Yeah, yeah, that it really, really kind of <laughs> was a bit of a bother. But every right. time we get together, it's like no time has passed because we speak the same language. Like, well, we you know? speak in between visits as well. Right. But there's nothing like being in person, right? Right. And getting to sew so, together. Yeah. Well, it's been fun. Yes. So thank you. And thank you guys for tuning in. We'll see you later.